Okay, hello everyone, this is Mr. Rob Ronan here again, and this is a guide for Advanced Demon Form Nezuko. She just came out yesterday, I didn't get a chance to play her yesterday, but I'm playing now, I played a few matches online, and she seems like a pretty damn strong character, and pretty reminiscent of the old version of Nezuko, the one that can actually fight with other Demon Slayers. She's just a very, very high damaging, high offense, rushdown character, where she just wants to be on top of you, pressing buttons, going for stuff, going for plus unblock things, and if you get hit, you kind of die pretty quickly against this character. Especially if she feels like um, cashing out and using demon skills, it's a very scary, scary character to be fighting against. That was a screwed up combo as well. It, that, <laughs> that didn't do as much damage as you can do, so let's, uh, let's go into the overall, I forget what I even call these, like beginner's guide. Overall, everything about the character guide now that she's out, which is really cool. So we're going to start off with the boring stuff like her buttons and things. So her regular attack string um, looks pretty flashy. It has a few points where it can drop against an opponent if they're airborne, which can be like a little bit unfortunate, but mostly it's actually pretty good at hitting the opponent um, no matter what height they're at. So that is quite good. There are a few instances where it does drop kind of when you're near the corner. So just be a little bit careful of that, but nothing too crazy that I think you have to watch out for. The up version of her combo is kind of like a Kaza. She does a sweep and then kicks upwards. It actually does more damage than her standing combo, the, which is usually not the case. Usually the it goes of lowest to highest damage is the up combo, straight combo, then the down combo. But in Nezuko's case, it's actually straight combo, up combo, down combo. And down combo, as you just saw, Leads to a hard knockdown, she does a flip kick. The opponent's, you know, on the floor for a bit and it does the most damage. So if you want to do like simple really simple combos like this for some reason and you just want to end like this, you'll get, you know, an okay chunk of damage and it costs you basically nothing. Um, her aerial buttons are kind of like old Nezuko except her scratch angles are kind of not as good because unlike old Nezuko who can scratch with the an instant jump scratch, um, Nezuko, this version of Nezuko can't really do that. As you can see the second one can kind of do that but that's not really useful. So that means that this version of Nezuko doesn't really have the few hits, um, I don't know why I can't jump cancel, but the few hits into the dump cancel, unless it's doing a dive kick, because it just doesn't really work with this Nezuko for some reason, even if you do it really low to the ground. So that's a little unfortunate, but um, yeah, it just works like a normal one. Tilt attack in the air is quite good, it has a good angle and it has a hitbox kind of in front of it, so even if you don't hit with the initial dive kick you'll get this little hit, and it actually starts yellow combos or orange combos, which is really good, because a lot of her other combo starters, if you use lunge things like this, or her plus unblock things, start a lot of red combos, so that the fact she gets a yellow combo off of what most people get a red combo off of is really cool, and to me she kind of needs it because this is one of the hits I get most often that starts a yellow combo and that's where I get a lot of damage a lot of the time so make sure you're fishing around for getting your dive kick it's it's very good good angle good hitbox and starts a yellow combo which is really really cool her armor attack is nothing too special it um doesn't have a huge hitbox but it's also not small so I'll take that and it's also not multi-hitting so you know if you hit it you hit it and there's not gonna be any weird whiffing issues so as you can see, it hits around this distance, which is decent range, but, you know, just make sure you're not using it from, like, all the way back here like you would with a Kaza or someone. But, uh, yeah, it's good. Does a good chunk of damage. You can go into combos for resets or whatever and get your little chunk of damage from a red combo. It's pretty decent. Her grab is pretty similar to regular Nezuko's. It goes pretty far. She just doesn't travel as quickly, and maybe it's a little bit shorter range, because I feel like regular Nezuko's would hit around here. But um, it's still pretty good, good range, decent speed, and a lovely cinematic. And it actually leads to like basically instant um, instant ok, so if the opponent like recovers, there's an instant recovery, you dash in, you get right on top of them and it's very easy for wake up pressure afterwards. Um, yeah, that's basically all there is for her normals. Her movement speed and stuff is all quite average. Except for her jumps, she has pretty, like, mobile jumps because she doesn't really go straight to the ground when she does her jump side step, so she can stay airborne for quite a while, which is useful because if you are trying to fish for a dive kick, that it always comes in handy. And her dash in is pretty average speed as well. Okay, now for the special moves. 
Sending special is the Frenzied Kick, or Neutral Special. So these kicks are interesting. There's a lot of pluses, but there's also a lot of downsides to it. So what they are mainly is her most damaging special move. Nearly 2,000 damage for a single special move is really good, pretty similar to Rengoku's standing special. And um, But hers is kind of quite interesting. So unlike regular Nezuko, she can't actually cancel this like at all into like anything. She can't dash cancel or like sidestep cancel out of it if she's whiffing it or trying to do anything. But once you press the button, the whole thing is going to come out and you have to watch the whole animation, whether it's on hit, on whiff, on block, it's going to come out. And that couldn't be good or bad depending on the situation. Unfortunately, if you are using it in a combo and you're like here, it means you can't dash cancel it and dash cancel in for combos or get any kind of extension or you can't cancel it into her tilt special or her guard special. That just doesn't work. <coughs> As a side note, you can actually combo it into her Tilt Demon skill, but we'll get to that. That's just a property of the Tilt Demon skill. <clears throat> but um, in other situations, because of the certain hitbox that it had, I mean the certain kind of pop-up that it gives, you can actually combo off of it, say, if you are near a wall. So in that aspect, it's kind of like Hinokami Tanjiro's um, neutral special, where you can't cancel it or do anything, but if you are in certain situations, you can just combo off of it completely for free. You can either just go for regular attacks, or I prefer to actually go for a dash cancel, so that you can get aerial combos and stuff. It's a free dash cancel, by the way. But um, if you are a little bit further away, you can just go for regular attacks and do whatever kind of combo you want to do with your regular attacks. But um, where it becomes kind of good, but also kind of bad, is when you're using it on block. On block, this is hella plus and does a lot of guard damage. Against opponents that don't know how to fight Nezuko, this has basically become like this- oops. <laughs> not that, not that. Becomes one of the strongest things about the character, because you can just be attacking, attacking over and over again, and it is so plus that the opponent just can't do anything about it. And after, they've blocked like one or two reps of it, depending on which attack strings you do. I didn't mean to do an up attack string there. But they're just blocking and not pushing back at the right time, you can just loop this in a few times and the opponent's guard breaks really, really, really quickly. It's very, very scary. And you don't have to do a full attack string like I just did there. You can do, you know, go a few hits into it, a few hits into it, and their guard will just break. Oops, I did not mean to do that again. I guess that breaks the guard too. It's just really plus and really crazy. But the bad part about it, and I don't know if I can get the AI to show it, but because you can't dash cancel it or cancel it into anything else, if the opponent does a pushback in the first or second hit, it will completely make the rest of the move whiff, and it becomes very, very punishable very quickly. So it goes from something that's super strong, it's very plus and does a lot of guard damage, to something that is easily defeated if they just push back at the right time. So, yeah. It's not completely worthless, but it's also not completely overpowered. You just have to make sure... Um, maybe try it once against your opponent, see if they push back at the right time, and then if they do, wane back a little bit and don't use it as crazily. But if they don't push it back at the right time, then just go crazy, break their guard and get your combos, do half their health, and they're probably dead in two hits. Um, one thing about beating the opponents that do know how to push back at the right time, though, is pushback does have, like, amount of recovery. When you're blocking and there are actually hits hitting you, it's about, like, one second before you can actually push back before you're, you know, allowed to do it again. So, even though I can do it really quick here on whiff, when you're getting hit, it's a little bit slower. So, if you do time it correctly, so that if you know when the opponent is going to push guard, and you go for this special move as they push guard, you'll go forwards as they push guard and kind of counteract the push guard. And then, since they've used the push guard, they can't push guard your frenzied kicks. So then you get to do a bunch of guard damage, and a bunch of chip damage. So, like, they push back now, I go through the push guard, and now I'm plus on block. And now they've taken a bunch of guard damage and a bunch of chip damage. And if I get any other kind of situation after that, they're basically going to die because they've taken a bunch of chip damage. And now they're getting hit by a full huge combo because their guard broke. So it can be very good, but depending on, you know, the type of opponent you're playing, it'll either be crazy good or you have to be very thoughtful about how you use it. But, um... Yeah, other than that, it's just really damaging combo ender and combo filler. You can cancel it after any of your attacks or your um, special, your tilt special move. And if you, as I said, if you're near a wall, it's very good to pay attention if you're near walls with Nezuko, because then you can get a free extension off of it, and that leads to a lot of damage. See that? 
cost me basically nothing, but it was practically a half health combo. And I could have used a demon skill if I wanted to do crazy, crazy damage. It's it's pretty good. And um, if you do really want to extend off of it mid-screen, you can use the tilt demon skill, which we'll get to soon. That is, yeah, another way you can extend off of it. So very damaging as a combo ender or extender and can be very good as a pressure tool. But uh, yeah, be careful. You'd never want to whiff this thing or let the opponent make you whiff it. It's very punishable. And another quick note on the standing special of when the opponent gets hit by it is if you end the combo with it and you know, you choose, you're not going to extend off of it. You don't want to use your demon gauge. Maybe you've ended mid screen and you don't feel like spending much more meter. You can actually get pretty good like instant Oki okay off of it just by using a dash cancel. Um, I mean, not a dash cancel, but you just you dash in and canceling it into a jump. And you kind of go with this weird angle flying at the opponent, and a lot of the times that will catch the opponent off guard. And um, they'll just get hit by it, or maybe if they try and wake up with a armor attack, as you saw I was behind them, so their armor attack would have whiffed. And it's just a pretty interesting way, and if you start your combo with these scratches, it's obviously going to lead to <laughs> some crazy damage. That again wasn't optimal, but anything that starts with Nezuko is going to end in crazy damage. But uh, yeah, that's just a little extra note. If the opponent likes to recover, you get to, to go for some pretty easy, nice Oki, okay, like wake up pressure. You just dash and jump over their heads. It's it's pretty nice. And if they aren't auto quick recovering, which is kind of rare these days, people people like to recover and not let you lie them down on the floor for as long. Then you kind of you know. You're kind of just around here and then you can go for some, you know, walk around, try and bait them out to go for a DP or something. Like if they... You can kind of go for like stupid stuff like go for a dive kick and then they think they can wake up and mash buttons against you but then you just jump again and go for another dive kick. Stuff like that just to bait them out doing weird things or bait them out for a DP. Like stuff like that. It works surprisingly well, especially if you add in a sidestep to make sure you dodge whatever they press. Is uh, pretty powerful, so yeah. Tilt special now. Tilt special is also a move that is like questionable in that it's not really that good, which is what makes me like really confused about this character. None of her individual tools seem that ridiculous. Like this isn't really that overpowered. This doesn't really seem that overpowered, but the way they all flow together and combine to make huge damage makes her kind of crazy. But uh, yeah, this special move, it's just kind of a half screen charging special moves it doesn't go crazy distance so anything a bit further than round start distance it'll kind of whiff on it does a nice big chunk of damage 1300 so cancelling that just into your other special move even if you don't get a combo is a nice big chunk of damage and it's a uh, yeah it's basically just what it looks like it doesn't have any special properties that i'm aware of that make it useful it doesn't have armor. It also doesn't even beat out like regular dashings. So if the opponent is dashing against you and you try to go through this to beat it, kind of like you would with a water wheel or um, maybe Shinobu's tilt special, that kind of stuff that can beat dashings, it won't actually win. So it's not like it's something that you can use to kind of win neutral. It's just a slightly faster way to get in. Maybe it's a little bit faster than your dash in, but um, yeah, they're pretty similar. <coughs> so I wouldn't use it crazily as a neutral tool. I would just use it, as I spoke about before, um, as a way to kind of counter opponent's pushback, because if you think they're going to push back, do this when you think they're going to push back, because then that lets you go for a super plus on block. Special move, and then their guard will break really quickly, really quickly after that. And um, obviously as combo filler, it fills in very easily because it can cancel into everything, unlike the standing special move, it can cancel into demon skills, it can cancel into your guard special, it can, yeah. It can cancel into everything, which is what lets you do a lot of damage in, a in your combos. So if you're doing something like this, you can see like all the places I can use it in here and then go into my ultimate attack and that would have done a billion trillion damage. And that's just because I was basically doing this and cancelling into my different special moves. But um, that's really all there is to say about it. Uh, yeah, it's good at countering guard push and you just use it to cancel into other special moves because it's fast and does pretty good damage when you're spending a bunch of meter in a combo. Now for the guard special is also something that I wouldn't really say is overpowered or individually a really strong tool. Um, it's not invincible on its startup like some 
like for instance your armor attack which is in invincible like practically as soon as you press the button this as you can see she doesn't have the white glow before she turns invisible so if you're trying to use this as a tool to like mash out of a combo or something or like do a push guard into this there's a good chance you might actually get hit out of it which i find kind of confusing because i thought it was meant to be you know an invincible reversal kind of move but um yeah just be careful when you're using it it's not as invincible as you may expect it to be however it goes very far which kind of makes up for the fact that it is not instantly invincible it let's see how far it actually goes yeah, it's pretty ridiculous, almost like further than round start distance. Oh, yeah, further than round start distance it can still hit. So a very long reaching armor attack, which can be very good in a lot of situations. Say if you're facing against a zoner or someone that keeps like summoning out supports around this distance, you can just go boom, teleport through it. Make sure you don't whiff it though, because that would be awful. And unfortunately, you don't actually get a combo off of it. You can't cancel it into anything. You can't dash cancel. Even though it has that nice pop up, you can't really get anything off of it. That is unless you have an ultimate, because that is the only thing you can cancel it into. And it combos very easily into your ultimates, which if you can hit confirm that or you know that it's going to hit, that's a big chunk of damage for a random DP. And uh, it does actually, the opponent is on auto quick recover, so if they were able to recover, like say after this, see the opponent pops up as soon as they can, off of the DP, they actually can't recover. It's a proper hard knockdown that the opponent cannot wake up from, so you get a lot of time. I don't know if it makes it a good combo ender, like, because you have to wait a long time before your meter regens afterwards, so it's not like it's a hard knockdown where you're going to build meter, but um, it's kind of cool that you just have a lot of advantage after it if you want to set up, like, fake jumps into stuff, but you just have so much time that it's kind of unwieldy. <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a half good DP in that it reaches really far, but um, you have to be careful that it's not invincible instantly. Now, for the demon skills, which is where things get pretty interesting. The standing demon skill is this really fast slash, and then someone's this flaming tornado on the opponent, and it leads to a nice hard knockdown where they're stuck on the floor for ages, and it does a nice juicy chunk of damage. And what makes its damage really scary isn't the fact that it does, like, 2,000 damage. It's the fact that it, um, appears to have reduced combo scaling, so if even at the end of a long combo, it'll still do a lot of damage and not just like the same amount of damage that this would it's kind of ridiculous how much damage it can do at the end of a combo i'll see if i can quickly think of an example of a little combo i can end with it here as you can see ending the combo with it it took the combo from like like 5000 to 6000 which at the end of a combo that long and with that many hits and special moves in it you wouldn't expect to get an extra thousand damage at the end of a combo, so it adds a big chunk of damage to your combo, and that's basically all it does. It is kind of slightly advantageous on blocks if the opponent does block it, that tornado does still come out, which I found pretty interesting, I didn't expect that to happen. So you can kind of chase them down, but it's barely plus. And I guess it might do a lot of guard damage, but um... It's not really something I would want to use in pressure just because of how expensive it is. It's only something I ever really use if I'm just absolutely wanting to take the kill. If I know the opponent's low on life, I'll just go like end my combos in this and just take the quick kill. Because it does a lot of damage pretty quickly, so if the opponent's trying to build back a, a support to break them out of the combo, it might kill them before then. But that's basically all of it, do is it does. You can't combo off of it unless the opponent is airborne. So if in any situation they're airborne, like this, just as an example, you can actually combo off of it using your other t um, demon skill, but I don't really recommend aiming for that because it doesn't lead to as much damage as just going for regular combos. But if they do happen to be in the air when you hit them with it, just know that you can combo off of it. But uh, yeah, that special move is just big damage. Now the tilt demon skill is another really interesting special move that... I don't know, is it really good or is it kind of mid-tier? I don't know. I don't know, it's kind of weird. It seems good, but also seems kind of useless. As combo filler, it's very, very useful because it lets you combo off of your frenzied kicks. Because it freezes time, teleports in and does this flaming kick that lets you get a free dash cancel upwards off of. So it's like the best combo extender you could ever ask for off of any hit. Like even if you're really late, you can just freeze time and be like, oh crap, I actually want to get a combo now and then you get to go for a full combo. It's crazy how good it is as a combo extender, and it, just being able to combo off of your frenzied kicks, which is something you usually can't, is a blessing. 
Um, but it, other than as a combo tool, it seems like it's meant to be kind of useful as some kind of neutral tool because you can teleport from full screen onto the opponent and you're armored when you land on top of them. But the thing is, it's very slow in a few ways when you use it in neutral. So unlike in a combo, it doesn't actually freeze time. It just teleports up to the opponent. And as you can see, after the red flash, Nezuko kind of stands there for a while. So it doesn't instantly teleport to the opponent. It has quite a bit of startup activation. And then it teleports to the opponent. And then she's kind of standing above them for a little bit before she does the kick. So even though, like when you're looking at it now, it doesn't look like it's that much. But if this is an active opponent and not just an, my training mode partner who is just standing there. Um, it's very easy for the opponent just if they're walking to dodge it or even like if they're sidestepping to dodge it or if they're like doing moving around and sidestepping but you're not going to catch them at all and some characters can even just walk out of underneath it so unless they're standing still and doing something that has a lot of recovery it's not really going to counter them and even if it does you only really get red combo which isn't going to be much. Um, so I don't really use it as a tool for this much, but then again, in all the matches that I've played, I haven't actually fought against a zoning demon like Susamaru, Uyahaba, so maybe in those situations it could be really, really useful, because I could imagine against fighting Yahaba when he throws the three rocks, he can't dash cancel out of it, I don't believe, or like sidestep cancel out of it, so when he's throwing the rocks I could just go for this, and maybe that would let me teleport on top of him and be a really good way of countering a bunch of his zoning. Which could be really, really useful, and only time will tell, but against any other situation, it's not really that useful, and I would just recommend going for a regular dash-in, and like, usually doing your dash-in gimmicks, like maybe going for a dive kick if you don't want to keep it, you know, as predictable and stuff, rather than going for this weird teleport kick. But don't get me wrong, this move is very useful, and it's a great, great, great combo filler. Um, it's just a little sad that it, uh costs you a demon gauge because that makes me a little bit inclined to not use it as much as I, I would like to because that means whenever I use it in a combo I can't break out of my opponent's combos for a while but it's pretty good you can get combos like this where you get to build back your attack gauge um, in a nice hot knockdown and by the end of the combo you've kind of built half of it back anyway so it's not too bad just uh yeah I wish I didn't have to sacrifice breaking out of a combo just to get some juicy damage but it, to be fair it is juicy juicy damage so it's kind of okay but uh yeah those are all of her special moves i guess we can kind of generally talk about um her combos and pressure and game plan kind of stuff and like as i've meant oh wait let's quickly show her ultimate activation it's pretty similar to oops, to old nezuko's activation just flies forward with a flying kick doesn't go crazy far about round start distance or a little bit closer so it's pretty easy to combo into and as you saw before you can actually combo into it off of your dp which is pretty crazy you know it's an ultimate does good damage and it's easy to combo into that's all that really matters um when she's in boost mode her combo ender is this but it's not really something that i use that much because it's not much more damage than you would get from doing a few special moves in surge mode just because of how much damage she can do in boost mode thanks to her crazy damaging special moves like jesus christ this character is ridiculous if she decides to cash out on you like this isn't even going to be an optimal combo this is just a bunch of special moves into each other and that's like three quarters of their life I'm like what uh yeah so she's a, definitely a cash out character and in surge mode, I don't know if she's that powerful in surge mode actually because she can't really link all of her special moves into each other that well. And if she does accidentally start a combo with a special move, as you can see it starts a red combo. So um, I don't know, the most you're probably going to do is like hopefully start with a hit and then go for something like this. But then in order to get her big damage she has to use a demon skill anyway, which isn't something she gets unlimited meter for. In this mode, but uh, I don't know. I think it's better off just using boost for her so to build back all of her meter that you spend in the combos or maybe to build back meter after you've spent both of your um, demon skills in a combo and you're like oh crap I kind of want to be able to break out of combo go for boost mode because she does crazy damage in boost mode I don't think there's any really point going into surge mode she builds back all of her meter and because she's a proper demon in this mode she actually regens health and stuff so yeah my recommendation is just using boost and not bother wasting your meter on surge okay now let's quickly talk about the combos that she gets in certain situations. Off of a regular hit, you kind of 
um, it really depends on where you are, actually. You kind of, in as a general rule, just like with any characters, you want to do as few hits into your special moves as you can. So hit confirm it as quickly as you can, because then you're going to have less scaling on your crazy damaging special moves. So in a situation where I'm not facing the corner, um, just if I happen to be like over here, I can do a special move like this, I mean a combo like this, and then I can cancel into this, dash up, and get this half damage combo where I get a nice hard knockdown, and of course you can end it with an extra special move if you want some more damage, but I think the hard knockdown is just a little bit more worth it. And as you saw, we had a little bit of time at the end of the combo there, so even if you do accidentally do a few more hits, you can actually still get the hard knockdown just, but you can't add any more damage at the end of the combo, but that's still a pretty decent amount of damage to get for a hard knockdown combo that lets you build back the special gauge that you spent on it. Not the demon gauge, unfortunately. However, if you are facing a wall, which is more likely and more common than you would think, you just wait to see how close you are to the wall, and then when you get maybe like two character distances from the wall, just go for your um frenzy kicks, and then you can just dash cancel upwards and do whatever kind of combo you want. Whether you want to go for some kind of reset, or some kind of damaging combo, you can get super easy combos, and it costs you basically nothing. A simple, a single special move in order to get a high damaging combo extension is pretty crazy. Mm, that's not going to do as much damage as it could because uh, of stuff, but also if you want to do, um, you don't want to dash cancel, you can do grounded attacks. And do something like that, and if you cash out, you can get good damage, but I like to be able, when I'm doing... Uh, I'm, I'm losing my words, I've been talking for too long. But um, if I am near a wall, I do like to just do combos like this that don't need my demon gauge, so that it gives me a chance to regenerate all that meter that I've maybe spent mid-screen using this as an extender, because now that I'm finally near a wall, I don't have to use it as an extender. So in the time that this combo was happening, here, like, let me get rid of a bit of my demon gauge. So while this combo is happening, like, do 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 I'm doing a full combo near the wall, my demon gauge is all building back, and luckily, this time, I don't actually have to spend any of my demon gauge doing this combo, and by the time I finished, I've basically built it all back. So, very, very cool, and definitely something you have to pay attention to. So just make sure you're paying attention to, you know, how close you are to the wall. If you are closer, like, I don't know how to push him very easily. So, like, if you are around here, you can just be like... I'm hitting him. Oh, we are pretty close. And then you can cancel earlier in the combo, and then obviously you'll be able to get more extensions than you would have otherwise. And, uh, yeah. It's really... I, I enjoyed this type of combo because it lets you actually pay attention to what's happening on the screen and stuff in order to get higher damaging and less expensive combos, which is really cool. Um, yeah, so if you even, like, kind of, like, at a diagonal angle and you really need to wait a long time, then you can do like a full attack string and then go into your tilt special and then into your regular special and then surely by then you're close enough to the wall. And even if you aren't, if you realize you kind of misjudged like, oh, I'm not actually as close to the wall as I thought I was, you always have the opportunity of still going into this special move and then getting some kind of reset or whatever you like off of that. Like into a restand, into a throw or whatever you want. Or restand into an armor attack. You know the drills. Um, but uh... Yeah, a lot of the time I'll find myself being like, oh, I'm actually kind of close to a wall. Let me just get my combos going like this, and I can just end it. This is also a hard knockdown in the air, I forgot to mention that. But, uh, yeah. Pretty pretty cool combo-wise. Off of any kind of red combos, like the tilt attack, um, which I find myself getting a lot more than this, so I get quite a few red combos using my tilt attack. I like to just do a full combo string into my tilt special, and then afterwards I can just mash, and the opponent has to respect that. They can't jump or out or anything, because you can only just not combo off of it. So it, it's like a guaranteed reset if they try and do anything else. But um, if they are, if you do suspect it, they'll be standing there blocking. Oops. <clears throat> you can also use just use it as an easy opportunity just to go into a grab. Both of these options <laughs> are pretty good. A lot of the time the opponent will just stand there blocking. And then they'll have to, you know, get hit by the grab. But even if they are blocking and you do decide to go for an attacks, like, you know, it's in your favor. You get to go for your plus unblock things, go for your cancelling out their guard pushes, and then their guard will break pretty quickly, and they'll die. GG's. And, uh, 
yeah, that's basically all there is for combos with Nezuko. If you are really wanting to cash out, um, like maybe if you've gotten like a nice punish or something where you know you're getting the hit, I recommend doing a single attack into your tilt special, into your standing special, because anything else you'll get a red combo and you don't want to get a red combo. So just do the first attack to make sure the combo is yellow and go into your two special moves, then go into this. And then you get to go into your tilt special after you do your tilt demon special. Tilt special into your guard special, and that will just do a ridiculous chunk of damage. And you can also combo it into an ultimate. Uh, you can even add more hits in there, as you can see, because we even had more time in that combo, but that was already a lot of damage, and I mainly use it for comboing into an ultimate. But, um... You can add in <laughs> that if you want. You can do a combo like this that only costs you two special gauge bars and does, like, what, probably over half of their health. If you want to cash out with your demon gauge, it's a lot of damage and you get a hard knockdown where you can build back all of your special gauge. So now all you've really lost is some demon, demon gauge and you've taken over half of their life, which is just ridiculous to think about. But uh, yeah, doing combos like that is kind of her whole shtick. So yeah, that is Awakened, Advanced, whatever you want to call her, Nezuko. She's crazy, she is strong, she can do huge damage, she can do crazy pressure. Sometimes, if the opponent doesn't know what they're doing. But um, yeah, she's definitely a Nezuko of the game. Crazy offense, crazy crazy visual effects too. She, she's just awesome. And best part is that she looks really creepy when she goes into search mode. Anyways. That is Nezuko, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!